the shit He's dancing real hard I know you'll never get sick of it He's got that key on Got that long sexy hair You know he's about to take his shirt off His abs so bare He's got a six pack They call him Suburban Commando He's a big motherfucker And he's dropping it low He's about to slap that ass Baby about to slap it so hard You ever seen this motherfucker Running naked through your backyard Video talk, bitch, we're talking video talk. Get your video talk. You best subscribe. You best subscribe or die. You best subscribe or die to video. Hello, 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 very buddy, very hitty, 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 hoody, 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 hitty, hoody, hoody, hello, 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 everybody. Hey, 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 hey. What's going on? And welcome to the video talk. Another fantastic episode of this podcast or live show or whatever you call these things. Hey, I'm Willy and I'm broadcasting to you from Finland and it is 8 o'clock in the evening, Finnish time and hopefully you have had a wonderful day and you will keep having a wonderful day after this too. Who's with me watching this unbox review show? Hebbo, Ace Man, Lina Marchetti, Elokuva Projectori, JTS Cinemaniac. Hello everybody and welcome to the show and uh, other 20 people as well. Hey, okay, tonight I have one box for you to open and you probably can know what, what, what is in the box because it is in the title of this show and yeah. It's a Empire Empire box from Arrow, but let's check it out. And hey, after this, I have a bunch of other Empire pictures and Full Moon VHSs from Finland, which I want to show you quickly as a reward for watching the show completely. Hey, D Blaze is also in the house and says, "Good morning, Willie." Hey, it's good. It's good evening here, but hey, D Blaze. Where the where are you from? Where there is some morning? Is it in the United States or something? D blaze, D blaze, always an ace. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm a little bit hangover uh, as you you might probably guess it's a Sunday evening, but I don't let that bother me because I'm here to talk about good, great picture movies. Hey, all right, let's open this sucker. But I also I already have opened it and show you tonight's topic. Okay, Winnipeg, Canada is the place from. Hey, how are you? What's the weather like in Canada? But this is tonight's video talk topic. A new Arrow videos release of um, uh, the Enter the Video Store Empire of Screams. And those who don't know what is an empire, it was an independent movie company back in the 80s. It was based by uh, Charles Band, uh, this kind of low budget filmmaker who did kind of like a very, uh, he had a very long career in making of genre pictures and this is like a curated hand-picked very small take from Charles Band's and Empire's catalog. All right, so maybe we go directly to the point. This includes uh, five movies, The Dungeon Master, Dolls, Zellor Dweller, Arena and Robot Jocks. And I was stupid, <laughs> stupid asshole what, that I was. I was first thinking when I saw the box and I was said, hey, wait a minute, is, is it there supposed to be only five movies? It shows six movies. And I was, for one second there, I was thinking, what is this movie called MGN? But <laughs> it's not a movie. Obviously, MGM is a Movie studio. Elokuva Projector says uh, he's a bit withered here too. So Elokuva Projector has been probably partying last night. And Elokuva Projector continues. I've had the box for a week so or so already still in the plastic. Good thing you open it so I don't have to hurry to see what it has eaten. Okay, let's not, uh, let's not waste any more time and let's go to see what this box Box indeed has eaten. Okie dokie. Now, oh, this is my unbox vision. So, uh, yeah, there's this uh, J card or 
whatever you call this, and this includes a short description about the films and their extras. And yeah, it is about the similar artwork than the bo actual box itself. But now let's see what is in the box. All right, all right. So we have five movies in there, separate plastic casing, and also we have this Arrow Video magazine, and I have. I have not read completely, but I did start to read it, and then there is uh, in this booklet. It is an 80-page booklet, or is it even longer? Okay, it's 80-page, 80 80-page 80 booklet. But this was very informative. This um, Emperor of the Bees, Rise and Fall of the Empire Pictures. It was an essay about the Charles Band's Empire Pictures and the studio Dino. Dino Chitta they bought in the 80s in the Italy and yeah also this includes the uh, Dolls Stuart Gordon's grown-up fairy tale uh, essay about the dolls and then it includes horror comics monsters and um, artistic integrity integrity in Cellar Dweller essay of Cellar Dweller John Carpeekler interview he was the director of Cellar Dweller Cellar Dweller that's a hard hard <laughs> Hard name to pronounce for a Finnish mouth. Substituting reality is the unmaking of Dungeon Master, an essay of making of Dungeon Master. Oh boy, I will talk to you soon about the Dungeon Master. It's a great, it's, it's fantastic, man. Then, another essay, Body and Soul in Outer Space, the making of Arena, the science fiction <laughs> blood sport film. And drop your chucks, these robots don't need to any disguise, a making of, uh, essay of making of do robot chucks, the final film in this box. But uh, as you can see, in Arrow, great Arrow video style, we have a very good essay, uh, and also with lots of interesting looking pictures there. And yeah, like I said, I ain't read it completely but what i read was very informative and and very entertaining yeah great set but see let's see what films we have here first the dungeon master obviously from year 1984 and then stuart gordon's dolls and then we have a cellar dweller Directed by John Carl Beekler, the same guy who directed Friday the 13th, part 7. And then we have a science fiction action epic arena. And then also directed by Stuart Gordon, we have Robot Jocks. Okay, yeah. So I will go one by one each of these films and tell you my review. I have watched these all and I will tell what's the what's in the extras and what, what did I think about the film. But first, Beta Boop Max Dennis, <laughs> that's, a, that's an alias that really sticks in your mind, says, gorgeous box set, it's a spaghetti o'clock here in Virginia, Dungeon Master is awesome. Yeah, Dungeon Master is one of my favorites in this box, and, and spaghetti o'clock, do you mean like noon, <laughs> 12 o'clock, or lunchtime perhaps? Okay, but yeah, first, the Dungeon Master. I reject your reality and I substitute my own. <laughs> you are a bold adversary. Oh my god, Paul. Gwen, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I'm having a very bad dream and you just happened to be in it. You lovely creature. All right, the Dungeon Master was directed by several directors for Charles Band newly formed Empire Pictures, or was it a little bit before Empire Pictures was assembled? But Dungeon Master, in any case, is from year 1984 and directed by seven different directors, because this thing includes seven different separate stories about this, which are related with this crazy idea about this Paul B Bradford, uh, a computer genius, a computer expert who is who is challenged by Mestima or Satan, played by Richard Mole, to uh, to a contest because this Mestima is a is a Satan wizard, evil wizard, and he thinks that Paul's computer wizardry is some kind of magic. So there's like. A, 
Mestima challenges Paul in separate, seven separate different adventures. And what we got here is like uh, adventure with zombies, adventure with rats, bit, this, this kind of puppet master thing. And then we had a giant. We have this big, huge statue, which is made with stop motion. And then we have Mitch's in that story also. And uh, then we have this kind of racing uh, racing sequence where they use the same same vehicles that they used in the... in the. You remember the movie Metal Storm, the destruction of Jared Sin, which was also made by Charles Band. They used the similar vehicles of that movie in that. So it's seven different tales and the movie <laughs> get this the movie is only 72 minutes long without end credits or beginning credits so so it's a it's a very easy to watch and very entertaining and um, I I like it I I have seen this multiple times because here what I have let's see, show this first it's satan and lunnat very highly rare finnish v vhs from back from 80s from western label and i i really do love i forgot to mention but <laughs> one of the tales includes wasp as an opponent of like hired by satan to you know <laughs> try to kill our hero and his fiance wasp blacky lawless in 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 his, in, in is in this film and this cover depicts Blackie Lawless like this main character which I think he's be like for only two minutes in this film but here it is Blackie Lawless starring in Satan and Lunnat which means Satan's Ransom which in my opinion is a better name than Dungeon Master and Dungeon Master was originally called Rage War uh, but they changed the name and it was before that it was called Digital Knights and the story went so that this ball barter was a computer game expert and these were different levels of you know of these different game games but they changed their plan and made the Dungeon Master instead and Dungeon Master was you know the name was was supposed to be, you know, cashing in on the success of Dungeons and Dragons role-playing game uh, back, which was very hugely popular back in the day. But yeah, it is now no, it is not in any way related to Dungeon Master. And uh, this is not also to be confused with the Amiga Atari ST game of the same name <laughs> that was made later, the Dungeon Master. But it is not the not a game about this film. Okay, so I think Dungeon Master is highly, highly entertaining film, and it is very easy to watch. Like I said, and it uh, well, not all the sequences in this film, which there are seven of them. Like I said, uh, not all of them are as entertaining. Uh, for example, this serial killer, which happens in downtown Los Angeles during the night, I don't think that's too exciting. But like I said. These episodes are very short, under 10 minutes, so you don't, you will not get bored uh, by this film. But let's see what kind of packaging we have here. Arrow Video has included here Arrow Video Sales Rental Service. This is like a, some sort of a Arrow Video uh, rental store car, which I think it's a nice little touch um, uh, with this film. Uh, and then we have uh, all these film have these kind of still images here yeah. nice ah here we have blacky lawless uh, was uh, what was the song they play torment tormentor du, 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 du. tormentor they play this song which is wasp song they play tormentor during this sequence of it with wasp yeah and also, also, hey, 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 we have uh, a new poster, new poster, which probably I should put on display behind there, but let's see what, what kind of a set we have. This is the new artwork, which you can see in this uh, cover, which was on, by default, it was on it. And yeah, the original Dungeon Master artwork. But like I said, I dig more this 
Saatanan Lunnaat, which has Blackie Lawless in the cover. Which one do you think, which one do you prefer more? This alternative Saatanan Lunnaat cover or this? By the way, I do have the old Scream Factory Blu-ray and it features Blackie Lawless cover. So I don't know why they picked this. I don't know. But yeah, either way, both are pretty cool. Right. Okay. So I will rate uh, I will rate Dungeon Master. It is not necessarily a not necessarily a four star film, but very close to be four star film. I will rate it three and a half stars, almost four star film. Maybe it would be a four star film if I would, if, if one would drink beer while watching it and have co invite couple of friends over and just see this amazingly bunkers film. Yeah, four and a half stars for Dungeon Master. And yeah, of course, I need to address the extras also in this science fiction fantasy adventure cheapo. So this disc includes uh, three different versions of the film via, via seamless branching. So you can pick uh, the original US version, the Dungeon Master, and that is, uh, do not pick that one because that omits completely the uh, lead in sequence, which has naked female nudity in it. And yeah, I, this old VHS, which, which I was accustomed to previously, this is a theatrical cut. This does not include the nudity scene in the opening. And I was a little bit, I was a little bit um, uh, amazed when I first watched this uncut version. With, and this also includes the Rage War version, which was the pre, you know, the first version. And that's, this includes the nudity scenes. And when I watched this, after seeing this for many years, I was wondering, hey, what kind of scene is this? I don't remember seeing this previously. So remember to watch the Rage War scene. And it is by default the version which runs when you turn this disc on. And also it, it includes the international version, which is the similar version to, to the Dungeon Master. Uh, I mean, the Rage War version, it includes the nudity, but it... It is some sort of like a in a different different order these sequences. I don't know why they changed. And I I was wondering why if 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 it's an international version which includes the nudity, I I was wondering why they back in the day why they picked this US theatrical cut for Finnish distribution. I I really don't know. But yeah, that is the case. Okay, and also we have a new commentary with star Jeffrey Byron, moderated by film critics Matty Brurevich and Dave Wayne. I listened to it, and this was the only sound commentary track from this box that I listened to it. And yeah, it was okay. It, it is uh, the Jeffrey Byron character, same guy, by the way, who was also in Metal Storm. The destruction of Jared Sin, and also the guy who played Miss Tima, uh, the the um, uh, uh, Richard Mall, he was also in that Metal Storm, the destruction of Jared Sin in 3D. So we have two guys from Metal Storm in same damn Dungeon Master film. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was okay commentary, nothing too special, and if you check out the I Reject Your Reality and Substitute My Own, a new interview with Jeffrey Byron, uh, it is the same same guy who is in the commentary and pretty much tells you the same thing in the commentary, um, a little bit more expanded versions maybe, but yeah, it was a nice discussion video interview on this by with Jeffrey Byron discusses about the film and working with Charles Band and also working in the Charles Band uh, Metal Storm film. Yeah. And then uh, like all these discs include uh, uh, they include the um, wait a second. The they they are all 2K restorations from negatives except one, I will say it later, and original lossless stereo audio, original sales seat, original production note, theatrical trailer and image galleries. They all these things include these two. But so but 
I will not mention these anymore later. But yeah, all in all, an excellent release which far over exceeds this previous Blu-ray. In the picture quality wise also and with the amount of extras. Yeah, all right. Any questions about Dungeon Master? Elokuva Projektori says Dungeon Master is the main reason for me to order the box. I have to admit, I have never seen it, be it before. Hey, Elokuva Projektori, take it out of the plastic wrapping and put Dungeon Master on because I think if you're a fan of, if you're a fan of trashy B movies, you will like Dungeon Master. It's a classic, sort of. <laughs> Okay, let's move forward to the next film, which is, which is... Sorry, I forgot to disable the looping, but never mind. Dolls was uh, a film from year 1987 directed by Stuart Gordon, the same guy who directed Reanimator and From Beyond. And this was shot right before Re uh, I mean From Beyond, and this was shot in the same sets even than From Beyond. And if you compare these two films, uh, Dolls and From Beyond, you might find it very, very um, weird that same guy made at the same time these two films because they are both are macabre films, but they are so different in tone and also also theme wise. So it was a little bit, a little bit overwhelming. And hey, I had never seen Dolls previously. I have no previous. A version of dolls in any format so it was a new film to me and in this film a, a car breaks down in the middle of woods during a thunderstorm and th there's this family who seeks ref shelter in this old mansion and this mansion is uh, inhabited by these elderly this elderly couple who are toy makers and obviously you might understand that the, the toys they you know they are alive and somehow they this this old couple you know turns nasty people into these little elves that they make dolls out of or something like that and also this uh, couple of punk rock girls and enter this house and they have this driver with them with this guy uh, i think uh, he, he was the same guy who played this guy he was the same guy who played in robocop to this kind of corrupt corrupt police officer okay the dolls uh, you know it's a, like a adult fairy tale and uh, kind of like a precursor to Puppet Master, which was also by Charles Band, and it, it was made in the year 1989. But a little bit more on, on that later. But those, yeah, adult fairy tale, it was fine. It was fine. And uh, I really did like the dolls. They were cleverly made and very well done. Uh, was they made by uh, John Carbeekler? Maybe, perhaps. They were made by the effects guy who directed the next film. Uh, and also there was a little a few gore scenes which were nice. And I hear in the in the making of they the, they say that somebody said that they made a you know it was a lot more gorier, but Stuart Gordon decided that it is not on tone on par with the tone of this film. So they kind of like toned it down a little bit, and uh, so we don't get to see the guts being ripped off by bitch pitchfork in this version, in none of the versions of this doll, dolls film. Yeah, dolls, okay film, but um, definitely not on par with Reanimator or From Beyond, but okay film, and I'm glad that I have finally seen this film. Uh, after all these years that I have been hearing things about the dolls, yeah. 
anybody seen dolls and any questions about the dolls feel free it's a live chat so you can chat with me and also it's a if you're watching this later you can comment in the section and ask me this thing but let's see the dolls we have the newly submitted artwork and then we have the reversible sleeve and by the way i didn't probably show the reversible sleeve on this thing either but the dungeon master looks like this yeah so and once more we have the this sort of like image still images from the film let me show you these three images from the film and in the back behind we have the new artwork on these cards and then let's check out the poster new poster okay the old artwork looks like this I think I prefer the or old artwork over this one. What do you think? I don't know. Maybe maybe this is more more appropriate for the film. I don't know. And in the extras we had the uh, new audio commentary by David Decatu, uh, movie director and Empire alumnus and friend of Stuart Gordon. And then we have archive direct uh, audio commentary Stuart by Stuart Gordon, and also we have third audio commentary by actors Carolyn Burdi Gordon. Um, she played the stepmom, wicked stepmom in this tale, and she was in the real life. She was a wife of uh, Stuart Gordon. And then we have assembling the dolls a new interview with Lee Percy, uh, editor of dolls. And this is was the guy who told me about they have been toning it down violence wise this film when they made it. And Lee dis discusses about the working with Empire Pictures and with uh, Charles Band. And they say that you could sometimes lose a paycheck or two or it was very late. And lots of these people say that. <laughs> Charles Band wasn't always on, you know, like exact where when he gave the paychecks for the people. Uh, then we have Toys of Terror, a uh, legacy ma making of dolls and archive feature it with Gor Stuart Gordon, Brian Yusen, and Purdy Gordon Williams, and Charles Band and Gabe Bardalos. That was also an interesting documentary about describing the work process that they really went uh, they, that went down were making this film and yeah they had some uh, very inventive ways to you know shoot them shoot the dolls but overall mm, uh, yeah I would rate this three star film um, yeah it, it was solid film but uh, I wasn't you know I was, I'm not a biggest fan of doll movies or puppet masters or that and so I wasn't you know expecting like reanimator or or from beyond so don't be expecting that maybe then you can you, you, you can find it. it it is very it is watchable film yeah so what do you have said in the chat Ville, do you have real dolls yes I do have the blow up doll called Tricker Travis a black guy with a dick which I showed you in the in the last night's video talk, video space chat. You might remember. That. I've never seen it, but I remember it at every video store with the cover of Doll with Sunglasses, says Beta Pup McDennis. Uh, yes, the original cover art of Doll is pretty cool one. Really memorable. I think so too. The old artwork is better. A classic one says Valkis. And video Gizmo, hey Finland, how's the life? Yeah, life is good. Watching, have watched the Empire video box and now talking about this. Hey, it's great. Uh, video Gizmo continues. I also got the video store box from Arrow. Was a, a bit disappointed of how small it was. But great titles for a buck. I think this was okay box and this, you know... You can fit this in the video shelf too. So 
I was thinking also that this is like a very huge box, but I think I was, you know, relieved that this is not, you know, like a phantasm size box or something like that. You can fit this uh, near your other Arrow video releases. Stuart Gordon is a great director, but Dolls might be the weakest of his works. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. It wasn't a bad film, but not on par with the reanimator and from beyond. <laughs> Most black guys have big dicks. Yeah, that, hey, by the way, that is for entertainment purposes. I... <laughs> I don't use it like 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 it's supposed to be used. I'm not into black black guys, especially rubber ones. <laughs> All right. Hey, let's move on with this thing. Oh, sorry. And go to Cellar Dweller. So, Cell Dweller is from year 1988 and it was directed by late John Carl Beekler. And John Carl, Be John Carl Beekler is best remembered from his work on making special, and special effects and gore effects for various different films. And uh, he also did some directing and uh, best, he's best remembered for directing Friday the 13th part 7, which is notorious about the amount of cuts they had to do to get an R rating for that film. You might have seen the uncut clips from YouTube or in the Shout Factories box and they are pretty fantastic on the gore department. But yeah, this was a film he directed in 1988 and this film is about this comic book artist who is a kind of like a good looking young lady and she moves into this kind of artist campus which is located in the middle of nowhere and in this house there was previously there lived uh, this comic book artist who is by the way played by Jeffrey Coombs in the opening sequence. And then this comic book artist goes there and finds these old comic books from that late comic book author who was played by Jeffrey Coombs from Reanimator. And then she starts to draw these monsters and what do you know, these monsters come to life. All right. Yeah, okay, so this was pretty by the numbers uh, thriller film and um, I, ah, okay, so we get to see these kind of like, in this artist campus, there's like the, oh, I mean artist retreat, yeah, and a bunch of artists which, <laughs> they're very strange personalities, one of the, one of them is like a, like this old type of detective and one of them are like videotape video artist and one of these is just goofing around so one by one these uh, people's pupils in this art art retreat are killed one by one uh, it was a little bit by the numbers a little bit generic horror film and it takes too long time to the monster finally appear but i did like one gory scene there is uh, one scene where the monster punches a head of of this one guy that was great and they, clearly you can see the hand 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 writing of uh, sign, signature effect from John Carl Beekler in that that scene and also I did like the monster in this film but pretty basic pretty mediocre horror film I would rate this two two stars out of five uh, a little bit bland. Um, and this too was a film that I had never previously seen. So it was first time watching this. So let's check out uh, the first we have the cards in this thing. Hey, here you go. Jeffrey Gooms, the reanimator is in the film. And the opening scene probably was the best 
best scene in this film. So the cover looks like this, and then we have the reversible sleeve. And gotta tell you, the reversible original artwork, I think it's a little bit better than the new one. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, compared to this. I like this more. And finally, I will show you also the poster from the release. The original artwork, I think it's better, and uh, the new artwork in this one. And in the extras department, uh, we have a new audio commentary by space special makeup artist Michael Deke, who inhabited the cellar dweller creature suit. He was playing the monster, and uh, it's moderated by Maddie Buredevich and Dave Wayne, and also grabbed by the coolies, a new appreciation of John Carl Beekler, the special makeup effect guy, and also the director of this film, and he did many films for Empire Pictures, including this cellar dweller. And uh, yeah, this was a nice, I think this was a fantastic documentary about the career of John Carl Beekler and they show a lot of nice clips from the films uh, that John Carl made, made, made effects for and also parts from that Friday the 13th part 7. So it was a nice documentary and uh, lots of this information I didn't know. I didn't know that he had involved with so many films that he... In, that they dis depict in this documentary. And then we have Inside the Cellar, a new interview with special makeup effects artist Michael Deke, and he was the assistant effects, effects guy, and also the guy inside the monster suit, and he discusses about the working with John Carl Beekler and also working with Embar General, so nice little interview on that. Uh, subject as well, but a little bit, you know, mediocre film, but yeah, well, very good release. That I cannot deny. Let's hope that this is volume one and more is to come. Yes, I do hope so too, that the Arrow video will put out some other Arrow video boxes as well. I mean, Empire Pictures boxes, because there's, you know, I will show you in the end, I will show you my Finnish VHS Empire collection, so there's lots of good stuff to be released. Yeah, I was. I'm hoping for more B movies in the same field. I have at least 50 titles on VHS that needs Blu-ray upgrade from 80s and 90s. Hey, video man and gizmo. So you have the Norwegian uh, Empire picture and Full Moon pictures there. Yeah, you're like me, but I have the Finnish one. <laughs> yeah, right. I was kind of hoping it to be a bit more trashy, says Elokuva Projector. Well, well, <laughs> there's lots of lots of different kind of trashy. I think it was trashy enough in my taste. I already had Cello Dweller as a German Blu-ray, funny little movie as well, says Elokuva Projector. What's, that's what's in the cellar. Yeah, that is what is in the cellar. And hey, by the way, I have added the, in the description field the link to buy this box if you're interested. In, and if you use that link, you will support the Video Talk channel. So consider that, that when you are making the purchase, if you're into this kind of stuff. I really hope they release all Gordon's latest films on a box. I'm a big fan of Stuart Gordon's. We just did a review of the Forgotten Gialis. Have you seen them all? And what is your favorite? Uh, no, I have... Yes, I, I forget the Gialis. Yes, I have watched them, but I couldn't tell you what is my favorite. Because I have seen them when they got released, so I have no way to remember all of these releases. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next movie. Yeah. Everything 
So, Arena was the... T- <laughs> Vanska says, what the fuck is this shit? This shit is Arena from year 1989 and it was directed by Peter Manoogian and it is starring, also starring Claudia Christian, the girl from Babylon 5 and also girl from The Hidden. So, yeah. <laughs> now get this, this is like a, this is like a, you know, high, very high concept idea. Blood sport in outer space. Come on, you cannot go wrong with that, or can you? So we also did that. We made the Champion of Space film <laughs> back in the day with our our friends, and you can watch that also on YouTube. But Arena, you know, it was kind of like inspired by Arena. So in this, it is set in the very far away in the future in this space station and this guy who is a you know cook in a restaurant gets fired and then they suddenly he learns that he's actually a pretty good fighter and then in this space station they make this kind of inter intergalactic galact- fighting German tournaments and this guy decides to enter them tournament. So it's a little bit like Karate Kid and a little bit like Rocky and a little bit like Bloodsport. Uh, but uh, okay, so but I think the <laughs> the idea behind this film is a lot better than the film actually is and I think I showed you the most entertaining scene of that that film and that creature was made by screaming Matt George and this is the by far the most imag- imaginative opponent in this film and the rest of the film is you know it's not terribly action heavy and this was by far the longest film by the way I forgot to mention all these almost all these films are very uh, they are very short a little over 80 minutes or under 80 minutes but this was a you know like a very huge epic this was 97 minutes or something like that so it's a little bit overly long and the biggest scene of this film is that you know it is like a supposed to be like a martial arts film or boxing film but the fight scenes are not really well made not especially very well made they, it was the directed by Peter Manoogian and he's like a horror guy. I don't think he's an action guy and I don't think they had budgeted that many days to shoot these fight scenes. So they kind of look very lame, <laughs> like in our movie. They look lame because they these actors, they are not martial artists or real fighters. So they kind of look not that good. But I will I will say that this the idea is very entertaining behind this. It's great. I love it. But I just wished that the film would have been a little bit more better. And they kind of like missed this opportunity to make this very kick-ass training montage. There is a training montage, but you know they really don't make any. They really don't make anything interesting out of you know being in outer space so it's kind of like a missed opportunity but I will rate this uh, two and a half stars and one star comes from the idea yeah and wish there would be a remake which would be a better film okay so, so this thing includes the new 2k restoration by Arrow Films by the known only known surviving 35 millimeter elements and that means that they have used the theatrical print to you know make this 2k master and there was some sort of mistake in that theatrical print so so the opening credits and the end credits they are like off <laughs> they're not in the center of of the screen they are a little bit off the center i don't know how they managed to fuck it up like that back in the day when they made the 35 millimeter print but they did and also it included new audio commentary with Peter, uh, director Peter Manoogi and moderated by film critics uh, Burichev and Dave, Dave Wayne and alternative full frame presentation. Didn't watch that. I watched the 235mm uh, print. And also documentary Not His Arena, a new interview with co-screenwriter Danny Bilson. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, this guy sounds a little bit bitter about working with Empire, so it's great to have also that kind of opinion. Uh, he complains that they had really had a very good script for this film, but because it, it was so such a low budget film, and uh, you know Charles Band liked to cut corners, so it really didn't transfer this great script in the screen. So I don't know. This guy probably thinks that yeah, it was supposed to be a very serious film, but <laughs> or very classy film but yeah it is it is trashy if you have a movie about the uh, prize fighter in outer space it's gonna be a trashy film right so i don't know and then we have empire of creatures a new interview with special makeup effects michael deek said the same guy who was in the previous film but this time he describes them uh, special effects work that he made with Empire Pictures and nice nice clips also in this in this uh, from the cur career in the Empire nice little effects they made and really with a very small budget okay so let's show you ah uh, this is the screaming Mac George monster that was the best he is the fighter in this film and you 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 it's a it's a uh, love making scene then oh you 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 oh ho, shit holy shit holy shit yeah <laughs> and then probably gonna show you the artwork this was the original artwork and by the way i do have the German Steel Arena DVD. I don't know what's wrong with this artwork. I think I like this more than this artwork. I don't know what you guys think. And also, this is not bad, this new artwork. This, uh, in fact, is... I think this is great. Better than this one, in my opinion. Okay, a little bit disappointing film, but nevertheless... <laughs> There's not that many films like this, you know, fight, fight, uh, tournament fighting films in outer space. Yeah. Steel Arena DVD looks awesome. Yeah, I think this is very, very nice looking cover, this. <clears throat> First two boxes is the weakest. Ah, you are talking about the Forgotten Jelly. Uh, trauma was okay from the first and girl in room 2A was and my dear killer was good in the second box set. That movie seems like crappy crappy trash. <laughs> Age limit 12, yeah, yeah, it's crappy trash. <laughs> nice to hear, I was thinking the forgotten G. Oliver forgotten for a reason, LSS Elokuva Projectory. Yeah, probably most of them are. I think the two of the Tylers in the... Uh, okay. Uh, the killer is still um, among us, of course. The nine guests for crime was a masterpiece. I love that Steel Arena cover, though. Says Lino Marchetti. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, Lino Marchetti. But, yeah. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Still uh, uh, one movie to go. One movie to go. And this probably is the best. So Robot Chucks, it was directed by Stuart Gordon, the guy behind the uh, dolls and also the reanimator and what not. Yeah. <clears throat> and this was made in the year 1989 and it is starring Gary Graham and also veteran actor Paul Coslow. And Robot Chucks is in fact this is surprisingly good Top Gun in giant mechs in the future flick. Hey come on, you don't get to see that many flicks by giant mechs fighting in the future. So the uh, Gary Graham plays this Achilles and a new like 
kind of gladiator who drives around these giant robot mechs in the future and in the future wars have been replaced by the by the um, <clears throat> Uh, the wars have been replaced by the, you know, two robots fighting between each other. So the Achilles is defending America against the Russian invaders, played by Paul Coslow, and they they want the Alaska to they want to get Alaska from the United States. So they arrange these robot fights, and whoever wins wins the Alaska. Okay, so. There are like two giant robot fights in the film and both of them they are excellently done. I would have probably wished that there would be more robot fights but never mind. The story is pretty interesting and it has interesting twists and also like I said uh, the special effects are pretty well done. It is a combination of you know miniatures and also stop motion and yeah also Reanimator guy also appears in one small role in this film, but this is not, you know, this is not, <laughs> this is completely different film. It's not a horror film like Dolls here or Reanimator, but this is more like a uh, futuristic action film. And yeah, it's not. I think it's rated R. There's a couple of gory scenes, and was there even nudity in one scene? Maybe or maybe not. I don't remember. But any case, I think this was the best best film in this box and this is very nostalgic film for me. I of course I do have Robot Chucks uh, on Finnish VHS. I have had that long time and also of course I do have the previous Shout Factory uh, Blu-ray release, but this is much more in much more better picture quality and this thing has a lot more extras than the previous releases so let's check it out what's inside the film i would definitely rate robot chucks it is four out of five star film for me so here we have achilles and achilles and also we have the giant robots uh, preparing to get it on which eat with each other yeah right and then obviously let's see the new artwork and also the old artwork. Old one, it's nice, but I think the new artwork, this takes the cake. This is excellent. I like it. I like this very much. I like this a uh, hell of a lot. What do you think? I wonder is it possible to get robot chucks each, <laughs> like scratching your robot balls. I have seen robot chucks a couple of times and I like it a lot. Hey, Elokuva Projektor, yes, it is excellent. And Videoman says robot chucks feels like a bad, good remake of Robotech. Hey, and I tell you what is also a remake from robot chucks. I think Pacific Rim is a remake of ro robot chuck of some sort, but it, I think Pacific Rim, it sucks ass, man. And Elokuva Projector says, I think the new artwork is a that too much anime influence. Yeah, maybe, maybe, since you put it that way. Yeah, I think you have a point there. And Elokuva Projector also says, Robot Wars had a little bit more robot action. Hey, check this out, man. I do have the Finnish VHS of Robottien Sota, Robot Wars. This is kind of like an unofficial sequel. Also, it was produced by Albert Brand and it was a, yeah, this was a full moon production. And this one, I, I was supposed to be, I was supposed to watch this also for this broadcast, but I didn't, I'm very sorry, didn't have time to watch it. And also another unofficial sequel we have here is called Crash and Burn from year 1990. And these two, what's, was it like more like a horror film or that? But it's been like a million years since I watched both of these. But I was supposed to watch these two, but didn't have the time to watch them. Yeah. 
But hey, we have on audio commentary, we have director Stuart Gordon and another audio archive commentary. We have uh, special effects director Paul Gendry, mechanical effects artist Mark Rappaport and stop motion animator Paul Jessel discussing about the film. Then we have an doc- interview with Gary Graham, the lead actor of the film called Crash and Burn. And this lead actor discusses about the project and working with Charles Band. And he also mentions that, yeah, they tried to, you know, cheat out some salaries from him, but didn't <laughs> didn't have the time. And also he discusses about the uh, making of the film and what it was like to, uh, you know, be working with Paul Koslo, who has also been in Dirty Harry, mov- Dirty Harry movies and a bunch of other... He was a big name. Or not a big name, but a hugely popular side character actor in the 70s. But anyway, he describes that they were making these fight scenes and he accidentally punched Paul Coslo in the face. And he was scared that now he's going to kill me. But he was like, hey, it's cool, it's cool. And that's his very good attitude when you're making this fight scene. And also, there's a documentary, uh, I mean interview, uh, called Her Name is Athena. The lady actor in this film, uh, Anna Marie Johnson, discusses about the making of robot jocks as well. And he has, she has also interesting stories about the, about the making of film. You need to check it out if you are a fan of robot jocks. And the scale of battle, David Allen, he was the special effects wizard in this, especially making of uh, all the stop motion for Empire. Uh, also, this d- documentary describes about the special effects of robot jocks and an appreciation to the stop motion animator David Allen uh, by those who knew, know him featuring contributors from uh, fellow visual effect artists Steve Burke, Janshi, Galvecha, Bol Gentry, and uh, gave, Kevin Butchaver, and Dennis Muren. Dennis Muren has also made some effects for Industrial Light and Magic, so you might, if you are, if you're watching this special effect documentary, you might have seen him previously. And also archival interview with actor Paul Caslow describing the working with Empire and, and working with this film. It's a great package, four out of five star film. I, in my opinion, this was the best film in the bunch. And not far away, second best was Dungeon Master. And then I think these three were, you know, kind of like mediocre. But uh, Dolls was probably the third best. And then Arena. And then lastly, this was the worst step, Cellar dweller but none of these films are you know like bad per se none of all these films are in their own way they are very interesting so i think overall this is a one hell of a great package and it is was it like 65 euros from amazon i have put the link in the description field if you want to check it out and also, don't forget that this includes also this great booklet which contains lots of information about the Empire Pictures and the films featured in this box set. I do recommend this Arrow Video Box for all who are B-movie hungry people and I suspect there's a lot of you guys out there. Arrow Videos. Empire Pictures box. Okay, hey, that is my review of Empire Pictures. Hopefully you did enjoy it and you did enjoy the video clips I always, oh, oh, first time that I featured them in the show. Hopefully they gave some something extra, a little bit extra for this live broadcast. And then, like I said, in the end, I promised to show you my Full Moon and Empire Pictures, VHS Collections, you have been such a good crowd, so I will, I will put you, I will show you my, my Empire Collection. But first, let's see to, let's see to what you have said here. Pacific Rim and Robot Jocks must be re- remakes of Robotech. Is it an anime? I, I'm, I'm probably I'm not sure if I have seen it ever. Robotech is one of my favorite anime ever. So is this an anime? Playlist Contola, Charles Band was very good marketing and new knows the value of excellent covers. Hey, you're quite right about that. 
And Dio Mies says, I saw this one circa 30 years ago. Memory serve me very mediocre at best. Finnish VHS came out like 1992. You're probably talking about robot chucks. Uh, uh, hey, I have my magnifying glass, so with lights. But this thing doesn't say, uh, it says only 89, but maybe it's 90 or 91. I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> 55 euro on pre-order from Arrow. But yeah, okay, that's a great deal. But uh, it's a little bit hard to order it for 65, 55 euro. Because <laughs> you probably the pre-order time has, you know, expired also. I hope you will clips show clips in the future. Hey, Hank Meister, I think I will. Uh, Lina Machetti says, I don't have enough disposal income for this set right now, but I'm going to watch Dungeon Master tonight on the 2B streaming channel. Hey, that is, uh, is it, that is available there. Hey, enjoy, enjoy my man. Enjoy my man. Great stream as always. Hey, but don't go away. Not quite yet. Let's see. The Empire Pictures, Will Ho's Empire Pictures uh, collection. And feel free to ask anything. But here we go. First of first of all, let's see the all the Trancher's film. So now this baby here, Trancher's Tuho lähetti that. Uh, this is the first Trancher's film, and like Dungeons Masters, Dungeon Master here, this one too is a very 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 rare VHS tape. If you're a collector of v Finnish VHSs over here, and this was released by Western label also. Then, this is a mystery. This is a complete mystery. Transfers 2. I have the UK tape here, but Transfers 2. There is supposed to be a Finnish tape of Transfers 2, but nobody, and I do mean nobody, has ever seen it. But this was, you know, this was sent in the classification the same day that they classified the subspecies film. And subspecies is released, but for some reason nobody has ever seen Transfers 2. So maybe they didn't release it. They only like sent it for classification in the Finnish board of film classificators. But uh, maybe they just dropped it for some reason. I don't know. But here is Transfers 2. I don't think I have ever watched it. Probably. And then Transfers Part 3 has not... I don't have Transfers Part 3 and I don't think that that has ever been also released in Finland. But here I have Transfers 4, Jack of Swords. Okay, great looking cover here as well. And rare as shit, man. I think uh, only twice I have seen this for sale. And also this is pretty rare Raagalaiset Äkki Kuolema. I think I bought this for like five euros or something, but this is one of these things that, you know, never is on sale. But uh, I, uh, no, 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 that was, I think it's now it is in Hutonetti, if it wasn't closed already, but can't be sure. Might come in some Arrow sales campaign cheaper in the future. Hey, let's hope so too. Transfers was much better movie than I thought. Yeah, Transfers 1 is it's, it's okay. It's time traveling movie. All Transfers are available in Full Moon streaming service. What is it that service called? Is it Full Moon? Is that FI Full Moon streaming service? It can be opened in Finland, yes, do not sub. So some of the titles are pretty crappy too for now. I, well, I honestly, I am really not interested in streaming. So <laughs> for me, I don't think what the point would be to watch these on streaming. I'm a collector. I match. <laughs> I'm a crazy guy. I pay like tens of euros to get this same crappy film than watch it free on streaming. I'm fucked in the head like that. We have to pay the shitty tax in Norway. 
Okay, hey, moving on. Full Moon Entertainment, and this too is very rare VHS. Shadow Zone, Pelon Raya, The Border of Fear. And this is a science fiction film set in this dream world in the, you know, subterranean laboratory. And this had some good gory moments, and this was directed by J.S. Cardone. Uh, okay, great special effects here as well, and Pretty rare tape, these shadows up. Anybody seen Shadow Zone? <laughs> no, you're not. You're the smart one. Yeah, I'd like to think so too. Hey, Pedon Sudelma, The Kiss of the Beast, or Meridian, it is the original title. And holy shit, I have never watched this, but goddamn, this is featuring Sherilyn Fenn. In the, from Twin Peaks in this movie. I have not watched it, but hey, I think I need to watch this. It's some sort of kind of Beauty and the Beast thing. And this was directed by Charles Band and also very rare tape. Oh, pretty much all of these tapes are pretty rare in the Finnish video market. But no, okay, not this one. P Puppet Master, I think this is pretty common. And this is also cut like for one minute. <laughs> I mean, movie with dolls coming to life and killing people, and they had to cut that down. Okay, there's some gory moments, but yeah, Puppet Master, that is not a rare, rare tape at all. Uh, Puppet Master, I think there's Puppet Master 2 and 3 released on VHS, but I don't have those, those in my shelf. Okay, Nukke Mies, Doll Man, uh, starring uh, Tim Thomerson. Uh, I think this is pretty funny film, actually. This kind of a small cup. Hey, this cup who is like the size of this VHS cover comes to Earth and he has this magnum gun that <laughs> blows everybody in pieces. I think this was pretty nice film and funny little action film. And this was directed by Albert Pion. And the cover, I think this cover is fantastic. Uh, Elokuva Projektori says, best thing about Full Moon Stream is the Carl Charles Band vlog where he talks with all the veterans. Oh, that sounds very interesting. First episode talks with John Carpenter. Uh, Dolman is very funny movie. Elokuva Projektori, did you watch it from the, uh, did you watch it on uh, Full Moon Streaming? Hey, moving on, pretty rare tape, Pahan Siemen, The Seed People, it's like a invasion of body snatchers deal, and hey, if you have, if you really have access to that full moon streaming, always tell me if it's available on there. Uh, it has been a very long time since I watched it, but it was also directed by Peter Manugian, the same guy who directed the arena. Uh, this is from year 1992 and 19 minutes and cover page as well here is pretty awesome again. Nice VHS man, I like it all a lot. Hey Nico, great to see you in the chat. Uh, is this really? No, uh, 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 no, this is not Charles Band movie. <laughs> I thought it was Charles Band movie, but I don't think this is a Charles Band movie. It's it's by some asshole called Barry and Enright Productions. Okay, <laughs> so I will not talk about that. But this Netherworld, hey, I I got mixed up. The same day that, you know, this got its age limitations, the same day they were, they gave classification for Transfers 2, but this is released, clearly this is released, but Transfers 2, no side of it. Uh, Netherworld, and this is cut like 30 seconds or something, uh, and once again, a film that I have not seen in million years, at least. But great looking cover, flying hand comes out from stone wall or something. And this is directed by uh, David Schmoller. 
Yes, Seed People is available on Full Moon streaming. All right. Hey, is this also Netherworld available there? Uh, that Carpenter interview was very interesting. By the way, nice anecdotes of John's early times and how people were connected with in the industry. Oh. Hey, what what film did John Carpenter do with Charles Band? I don't think they have worked together, but maybe they knew each other. But I don't know. I could be mistaken. And Elokuva Projekteri watched watch it uh, full moon uh, streaming this uh, watch that uh, Dolman. Hey, 54 people watching. Hey, that's nice to he have so many people in this. While this this topic may not be the most you know media sexiest topic, and yeah, but great to have so many people here. Hit that like button, and if you're new around here, hey. Remember to subscribe the channel and order the alarms alert so you won't miss the next video talk stream. He was working as Alan Smith he. Which on which movie? Really? That is have has he directed some full moon film that I don't know about? God damn. Then I have to feature that in the monthly carpenter. Yes, the Netherworld is available on Full Moon as well. Hey. Pretty rare tape. Certainly looks like red letter media stuff. You should review this. Hey, that would be an excellent idea for for the for a stream. Hey, why do I have I have a <laughs> I have so many texts overlaid here? <laughs> that was a mistake by me. Dolph Lundgren's Joshua Tree needs a Blu-ray. Hey, I do have a Blu-ray on Joshua Tree. Do you want to see it, video man? Hey, continuing few more. Pirulliset lelut, another rare tape and another film that I have never watched. This is called Demonic Toys and yeah, it is featuring, you know, <laughs> toys that kill, but I ain't seen it, but it looks pretty nice. It looks pretty nice. You got to is isolate the mic on the table. It sends bass waves when something hits the table. Hey, I know my table is it's so fucking crappy. I need to get a new table because this is, you know, like kicker. <laughs> okay, I will got the Go to get the Joshua tree. Here we go, Joshua tree. And this is actually, this is a Shout Factory release of Dolph Lundgren's Joshua tree. And my favorite lineup from this movie, give me the money, Jimmy, it's cheaper. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren actually pronounces like it like that. It's cheaper. And this film has a great John Woo style shootout scene. And it, it's, it is awesomely gory, that scene. So it's like a very traditional action movie. It moves along and then come t comes this warehouse shootout. And they use like wild bunch squibs in that scene. When I was first watching this one... Holy shit, is it, this is a different film now. Nice, I really... And, and all these knife things and cutting... Uh, cutting like throats with knives and stuff like that. I think it's the... It's a very surprising scene. John Carpenter cut some Charles' first movies. Okay, didn't know that. Always great to learn new things. All right, all right, subspecies. I got mixed up previously, but another very, very rare film, Vampyrian Taistelu, The Battle of Vampires. Uh, maybe this is one of these films that I have never watched either. Or maybe I have seen it on Filmnet or something. And this was directed by Det Nikolau, one of the directors who did an episode in The Dungeon Master uh, and a bunch of other films as well for 
uh, Full Moon and Empire. But I think there's like three sequels at least for subspecies, but I really don't remember seeing it. And actually this looks very interesting, some like stop motion little vampires in the in the below the lady. These films what we called hangover videos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you get a hangover and then you cure your hangover by watching these trashy films. I watched all of the subspecies from Full Moon as well. Hey, Elokuva Project, do you remember how many sequels there was for subspecies? Great companion for night shifts that streaming is. Okay. Hey, that's a great if you can watch it from work. <laughs> hey, Puppet Master 2. I didn't remember that I have Puppet Master 2, but I do have Puppet Master 2. But... Puppet Master 3 I don't have, but here it is. Much more rarer tape than this one. This is pretty common, but this is not that common. Uh, don't remember if this was cut or uncut, but yeah, probably it is cut. Okay. And this was one of the, I think this is one of my favorite covers, Laser Mies, Laser Man, or should I say Laser Blast from Suomen 3M, Finnish 3M, and this is a very ancient release, and this is a hell of a rare, hell of a lot rare tape, and I have paid 90 marks, Finnish marks, back in the day, in the 90s, and uh, at that price, I think this film is a steal. You don't get to see, you don't see this very often for sale. Uh, and yeah, great looking cover, in my opinion. And this film was back from the 70s, from the times of before the Empire Pictures. And, and but this was directed by Charles Band, if I remember correctly. There's six movies of subspecies. Oh, there's so many subspecies. The last one came out this year. Oh my god. That's gotta be awful. I remember that cover from VHS. I had back in the days. What is the original name? It Laser Man. Uh, it's Laser Blast. The original title. Laser Blast I have on Blu-ray. Those stop motion animations are golden. Yeah. I somewhat like the very old white guy in the Puppet Master movie. He was very dry voice too. Yeah, Laser Blast is the original name of this thing. And now get ready for the ultimate rarities. Every one of these films is rare as fuck. Ghoulies. And <laughs> I really do like the Western Video Entertainment logo. And this is like, I got this from Tervola guy. You Finnish watchers know who is the Tervola guy. But I like the cover and the film is good too. And but most of the what I like the most is, is the subtitle Ilkeat Pikku Perkeleet. <laughs> that is Finnish language and that is uh, kinda like a very harsh word, like uh, nasty little sons of bitches. You could translate that as in English. So last nasty little sons of bitches. So ghoul is it's a it's a great picture and this was directed by Luca Bergovici for Empire Pictures. Have you seen Ghoulies and have you seen the sequels for Ghoulies? And then also a hell of a rare film Miehitys Joukko or uh, in its original title this is Zone Troopers and not many of people have probably seen this this VHS in Finnish VHS market. This is hell of a lot rare, and uh, this is about soldiers in Second World War, and they discover that there's a uh, crashed alien spacecraft in the front line, and they go investigate. Nice little science fiction action picture, this Miehitys Joukko. I have Ghoulies 1 and 2 on Blu-ray. All right, so you have the collection disc then. And yeah... Finally, but not the least, the Peiko or the Troll. And some of my watchers may remember how much I paid for this. I 
pay. I bought this in, was it uh, uh, December, last December? And uh, yeah, this was a hell of a expensive tape, but I have never previously seen this on sale. And yeah, I just had to get that. Do you remember the price? of the film. I even did a video on my Finnish channel about that uh, incident. But Troll, most of the people probably remember Troll from its sequel, which was an Italian film, but this too is kind of like very fantastic film and special effects were made, made by John Carl Bickler. Uh, Henry Hellander, 430 euros, yes. <laughs> that was the price. It's insane price. It is insane. I'm ashamed to admit it. But uh, sometimes you just have to get them. And one more thing uh, from these Western videos and from the Empire catalog. I have never seen on sale Terror Vision. And that is also released on Finnish VHS. And if this comes to the market... I will get the terror vision as well. But yeah. Elokuva Projektori says, I should order John Trooper's Blu-ray, but there's always something more important on my list on Bay Days. Yeah. John Trooper's, it's okay. It's great. It's, it's, it's a good uh, science fiction action fantasy. All right, hey, that is my Empire take. Hopefully you have liked this broadcast and uh, hopefully you will come next Sunday because, hey, what do you know? I have all these things to unbox, come on. It's gonna be great package, packages to unbox and make a little review out of these things. So I will catch you the next Sunday and now I think the I will it is my time to say good night or good day to you. But first let me answer this. Hope it was worth every single cent. <laughs> yes it was, it in, indeed it was. And brainless control has seen all those, but I don't remember nothing of those films. But the covers I do remember. Yeah, <laughs> most of the time the covers are the best part of this. Did you see the Bugens get a 4K now? No, I did not. Which company is putting out Bugens? I have never seen that film, but I do know the film. Hell yeah, alright. Make 430 years, my Video. god, this elephant, Video. that one guy Video. in the world. Video. Video. <laughs> it's Video. all about drug traffic. Video. <laughs> Video. <laughs> Kino Lorber is putting Googans out. Hey, that is maybe something that I gotta get. All right, hey, thank you for a great video talk. It's been a pleasure talking to you of the videos and hopefully I see you everybody in the next Sunday and until then I wish you the great week. See ya! Running naked through your backyard.
video talk. Bitch, we're talking video talk. Get your video talk. You just subscribe. You just subscribe or die. You just subscribe or die to video.